Okay, in this lecture we're going to be discussing uh, another topic still based under this idea of macro sociology when we talk about the large elements of society, which is uh, what actually holds society together? What keeps societies from just diluting, dissolving, breaking up, uh, from everybody doing their own thing? Um, again, this idea of cohesion, what holds a society together? Um, to a large degree, we refer to uh, this as uh, to what degree, uh, to, uh, to what degree is society integrated? Um, in other words, uh, the degree to which the members feel some kind of a bond with each other that does, in fact, hold them together. So when we talk about this idea of what holds society integrated together, we look at this uh, idea of social integration, uh, how uh, attached or integrated are members in society, uh, how do they feel toward each other. Uh, one of the people that was a uh, main um, uh, uh, contributor to this idea of uh, social integration was Emile Durkheim. Um, and if you'll remember, when, he, when we discussed him in Module 1, we talked about his study of suicide. And one of the things he actually postulated was that uh, suicide rates would be higher among people who felt less integrated into society. They would be the people who would feel most likely to kind of feel like outsiders or those people who didn't feel like they actually belonged to society. And as we saw from his research, he demonstrated those people and the people who had characteristics of low social integration were the people who were most likely then to opt not to be part of society anymore uh, through the path of taking their own lives or suicide. So um, when Durkheim was writing about this idea of social integration, he also talked about some theories about various types of uh, cohesion which keep society together. And he pointed out two uh, main ones, the idea of uh, societies either held together by mechanical solidarity or organic solidarity. And again, solidarity, that idea of inclusiveness. When we talk about solidarity, we often think about things like uh, labor unions. When workers are going on strike, we say that they have a high degree of solidarity, meaning they all pretty much agree on a certain path or, or uh, to uh, espouse certain values, and that's what holds them together. And that's what uh, Durkheim's talking about in this very first example of mechanical solidarity. When we think of the word mechanical, we think of machines. And when we think about machines, we usually think of uh, machines all operating in the same way. So if I have, uh, let's say, um, I'm in a classroom right now looking at a, a clock on a wall, and I assume that that clock was made in the same place that the clock in the next classroom was made. So if I walk into this classroom and see what time it is, and I walk into the next classroom and look at a clock that was made in the same place, I would expect them both to work the same way, like a machine. So mechanical solidarity refers to this idea of society being held together uh, by the fact that all the members of the society tend to act and think and feel and believe the same things as each other. So we look at you know, uh, societies for examples of this, and again, being uh, in uh, Lancaster County, or being near Lancaster County at this present time, uh, one of the best examples that I usually choose from students from Hack to, you know, to, uh, to um, come up with an example, uh, look at the Amish. Okay? We look at the Amish as a community, clearly there's a subculture within what we might call American society, but we could also call them a society unto themselves. And we could say, what holds the Amish together? What makes uh, people not only identify with being Amish, but also agree to live in that type of society or culture? And one of the things we could say is, one of the uh, things that we would describe as being Amish culture is an idea of everybody believing the same thing. So clearly we can say it's based on a uh, very strong religious belief, but they also have very strong cultural beliefs, such as uh, not uh, using modern technology, uh, we can also look at uh, things like status symbols, uh, methods of dress. We can talk about their types of transportation, so when they use horses and buggies, uh, they choose not to have electricity in, in their homes or use telephones. So we can say all these things are part of their culture, and when we say what does it mean to be Amish, we're saying that you agree, as being part of that culture, that you are going to abide by those rules. You cannot say, Yes, I'm Amish, but I drive around in a car and I wear jeans and I have a cell phone and um, you know I have electricity and video games and television in my house. To say to do those things means you are 
not going along with the rest of society, and if you were an Amish person who decided to do all those things, the society might say to you, you are not living up to the standards or beliefs of our society, so therefore, and we talk about things like shunning or being expelled from that society. So when we look at Amish society, we can say that that is an example of a society that's being held by, uh, held together by mechanical solidarity, uh, very strong um, uh, beliefs shared by the group. Uh, we generally kind of characterize that as, like I said, very little diversity within the group, uh, not a lot of differences, people pretty much all doing the same thing, um, and a kind of a, a, the development of a shared consciousness. Well, clearly we look at that in Amish society, but does Amish society resemble, let's say, American society as a whole? Clearly not. Uh, we are a society that prizes itself, as we talked about in an early module, on things like individualism, everybody doing their own thing. We look at the various differences between our society as far as rich versus poor, and men and women, and different races and ethnic groups. So we see a huge amount of variation among modern societies, so we can clearly see that it doesn't look at all like mechanical solidarity. So what holds American society together, if we use our own as an example? And what Durkheim said is that that is an, anxiety, uh, an example of a society much more held together by what he called organic solidarity. Again, think about what organic means or the idea of organs. Again, back to our kind of a definition of functionalism, and clearly Durkheim was very much a functionalist himself. All the parts of society working together to form a larger whole. So what Durkheim was saying by organic solidarity is that as society developed these, these very long or very specialized divisions of labor that everybody in society has a specialized task or tasks that they accomplish and that what holds society together today? Not a common thinking that we all agree on but a sense of interdependence that we all need each other. So I can clearly make a uh, career out of talking about sociology, and that's exactly what I'm doing and being paid for it, but I cannot create a cell phone. So if I want a new iPhone, uh, I cannot just go down to my workshop with some tools and build one myself. Uh, I need to go to another person who has the specialization to do that, or better yet, let's say it breaks down. I have to go stand in line at the Apple store and talk to the uh, product gurus or geniuses, you know, whatever they call themselves. Um, because I don't have that skill. Uh, but likewise, uh, your parents sitting at home cannot say, well, I want my child to learn sociology, so I'll do it myself. No, your parents had to send you, or you had to make the decision, I need to go to Hack to uh, avail myself of a person with that specialized skill. So, again, mechanical solidarity, common thinking, beliefs that hold a society together, organic solidarity, while there's a lot of differentiation and division of labor, specialized tasks within that society, it's the interdependence that results in that society being held together. So two very different ways of answering the exact same question about this idea of what is societal cohesion.